The King of Rio is finally back. We finally get Jose Aldo. And it wasn't a retirement that was too long. He just retired off of that Marab fight, which was a very boring but kind of close fight. I don't know how you want to tail that scorecard because of Marab's fence wrestling, but not really getting any takedowns. It was a very weird fight. And when Jose Aldo called it quits, I think it broke everyone's heart, every hardcore fan. This is a guy that from the WEC all the way into the Conor McGregor loss was on a 15 fight winning streak and was considered the featherweight GOAT and still is considering the featherweight GOAT status. It's hard to deny him over uh, a lot of other of the fighters like Volk or Max or Conor. It's not even close in my opinion. I think Jose Aldo is the premier number one. But then Jose Aldo did lose to Conor McGregor and that was the biggest issue was People started to forget who Jose Aldo was. People started to forget how good that man was. And if you really look at Jose Aldo's losses, the Conor McGregor loss was horrible, obviously. The both Max Holloway losses, Max Holloway was in the league of his own. That was Max Holloway. That was Blessed Express. But then you look at the fights after the Volk loss, which once again, another incredible loss to a guy who ends up reigning the division for a while. And then you have, when he goes down to 135, he has a close fight against Marlon Marais, who a lot of people thought Aldo won. And I also thought Aldo won. That fight was super close and the judging was kind of off that night. And they gave it to Marlon Marais. And then you have Piotr Jan, who became this sort of demigod after the Jose Aldo fight. And then that's when he started to fall off. That win, that loss to Piotr Jan has not really aged well. It's starting to once again be re-aged as Piotr Jan is starting to win again. But then after that, I mean, you go on a three fight winning streak of really good guys. I mean, Cheeto Vera, Pedro Munoz, and Rob Font, all guys that are in the top 10 of the bantamweight division and were real contenders. If you look at those three fighters, there's never a close, there's never a fight that they just get dominated in. The other, the Cheeto was the only one that got dominated by O'Malley. But then after that, like, Pedro Munoz always has a close fight. Rob Font always has a close fight. He either wins or loses. But these are the top tens of the Bantamweight division. And Jose Aldo made it look very convincing that he won. And then you go to that last fight where it's Marab, where Marab was really holding. Marab wasn't really doing much. It didn't really go anywhere because of Jose Aldo's impeccable takedown defense. This guy has only gotten taken down maybe four to five times in his whole UFC career. His takedown defense is, I mean, it's the most extraordinary thing we've ever seen. And the Jose Aldo that we're seeing today, just based off of the the fight that he did take, I think Jose Aldo is really trying to go back into the title contention, trying to go back into what he wants to, to win, which is a UFC title. And I say that because of the clear fact that he's taking a guy like Jonathan Martinez, who doesn't have the name power, isn't the most uh, recognized name, but is an absolute dog. I've talked about it a lot. Jonathan Martinez is beautiful he's a south he's a southpaw leg kicker that can throw knees he can throw body kicks throws all three levels of the high uh, of the kicks and it's a weird fight to really look at because you have a guy in jose aldo who's been doing it for years this sort of style that jonathan martinez has been able to develop of this boxing but also kick heavy game the jonathan martinez is a southpaw and he's part of this new crop of bantamweight fighters that Jose Aldo realistically can fight a lot more name recognized talent. He is the king of Rio. He is one of the most prolific featherweights we've ever seen who's going down to 135. And he is 37. He doesn't have that much left, especially in the bantamweight division of an actual title chase. Yet he's taking a fight in Jonathan Martinez that is so contested and it's such a difficult fight because if you lose against jonathan martinez you might as well just retire after that but if you beat jonathan martinez you still are like one or two title one or two really high prolific fights away from a title which leaves the big question is what is jose aldo really trying to do in this division listen he's the great he's the great jose aldo in the featherweight division and now he's going to 135 once again and he is still in that weird spot where if you give him a title shot after this it's jose aldo i mean it looked great for o'malley standards 
but also he doesn't really get it after this fight you would have to give him another fight like Sandhagen like uh Marab again uh, maybe it's such a weird spot where Jose Aldo's putting himself in and it's weird to see what kind of Jose Aldo we do get we've seen such a change in his styles throughout the years we had Jose Aldo in WEC which was just a fucking disgusting leg kicker if anyone wants to watch the Uriah Faber Jose Aldo fight be my guest because that is Jose Aldo's that is his first style in perfection with the leg kicks and the absolute slamming of them and then being sort of like a counter puncher to anything you ride through it was a very dominant performance and that's how Jose Aldo was in his featherweight reign he was this heavy leg kicker that had wonderful power his Muay Thai was beautiful but then when when he started to lose when he started to lose to the Connors and the Max we saw a really different Jose Aldo in the Jeremy Stevenson Alto Moicano fight, he was the more of a boxer, the counter puncher who would kind of throw overhands and stuff like that. Rarely did he kick. And that's what happened in 135. He became predominantly a very point heavy boxer who was just prolific. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't the leg kicking dominance that we saw from Jose Aldo, which made a lot less of sense because now you're fighting guys who are semi your height as in featherweight. He kind of looked small for the division once these new crop of fighters started coming in and you still don't leg kick. He really abandoned the leg kicking game all throughout his last four fights, which was Marab, Rob Font, Pedro Munoz and Chido Vera, where I mean, yeah, he did kick. He he had the possibility of kicking and he would, but it wasn't the slam. I'm throwing, I have to throw 15 leg kicks. Now it's just like, I can throw 15 leg kicks. It's not a real priority of mine. And he became this point boxer. And that's a big question going into this fight. What Jose Aldo are we going to get? Because you can get the Jose Aldo who is a nasty leg kicker and just have a leg kicking exchange between Jonathan Martinez and Jose Aldo. Or are we going to get a Jose Aldo that tries to get inside and get those boxing rounds going? Because that is one part of Jonathan Martinez's game that is looking a little shy, where his actual inside boxing, when you get past his kicks, just does not look the greatest. It's not the most polished thing we've seen. I personally think the Jose Aldo that is coming out with leg kicks will make this fight a lot closer as if you're heavy boxing with Jonathan Martinez, that is a perfect style for him. He would love to chop that leg apart. He will love to do it. And we saw that in the Adrian Yanez fight where Adrian Yanez just was not a, a, the boxer that he was supposed to be because of the leg kicks. And so I think Jose Aldo really needs to come out with leg kicks. And if he doesn't, this might be the end of Jose Aldo. It might be the end in terms of actual bantamweight contention title shots, but it might not be the end in terms of his career. He might still fight. I would love to see him fight Dominic Cruz if he did lose this one. I would love to see him fight those caliber of fighters where it's exciting. Jose Aldo versus Cody Garbrandt would be super exciting, where it's just more of a name value sake instead of actual 135 contention. The King of Rio is back. Let me know how you guys feel about Jose Aldo in the comments. Let me know how you think he will come out during this fight. But it's been Santi. It's been studs.